five months we've had the car and camper in storage and our very first night back on the road again Pamir Highway Tajikistan we were so pumped and now yeah here we are bruised and broken and after a few months waiting for the Central Asian winter to end, we were extremely happy to take Grizzly and Bear out of storage. Tajikistan, here we come, hopefully. Got a fresh bed. To go. It is time to go and I'm ready. That's this trip over, baby. Can't believe it. This just happened. Okay, we've just had a major disaster. We're not going to be able to do the Pamir. I'm trying to stay positive. It's really difficult right now. We try and think everything happens for a reason. Anyway, I'm a bit panicked. Yeah. I'm a bit. Yeah, we need to get warm. Yeah. I don't know if we're unlucky or unlucky. We were just sitting here discussing the, like, why are we so unlucky? And then we thought we had to say, no, hang on. Toughen up a little bit. We're not. We're um, lucky. Yeah, we're very, very lucky. We could have been in the middle of the Pamir Highway. Yeah. But we're in the middle of the Bishkek Osh Highway, you know, and we're up above, I think we're at like, holy altitude where we're up there, you know, we're really high right now. If this was winter, it would have been a different story. Uh, well, it's snowing though. We had phone reception. Yeah. We could have, we could have been going faster on a corner of a, of a big drop off, who knows, so. This is my favorite one too. So that has me doubting. We knew this car, this vehicle had a bit of a rough history in Poland. We're so lucky as well. Like I said before, we had phone reception and we've called Ryan from Iron Horse Nomads. Thank you, thank you, Ryan. We had our car serviced there before we left Bishkek and um, we rang him and he's just been so helpful. He's gonna get back to us. He's gonna get a truck on the way. Yeah, he's cheers. <laughs> Waiting for a tow truck, drinking wine. <laughs> And watching an old video. Watch videos of when we were sitting on a beach in Albania and enjoying the sunshine in better days. Icicles hanging off of the front of the bloody car off the LED bar. But anyway, I thought I'd come out and reassess the situation. We've calmed down. The initial stress has worn off. The damage is bad, but it's not. It looks a hell of a lot worse than what it is. It's not the axle that snapped. Initially, I thought it was the axle, but it's the swivel ball housing and obviously the half shaft has gone with that maybe the track rod is a little bit bent we've been in touch with newman 4x4 in france and alex is already onto the parts alex hasn't heard about us for about five months who knows within a day or two we might have the parts being couriered to iron horse nomads and our good friend ryan who has helped us out so much in this situation we hit a massive pothole when i hit that one we weren't going too fast i would say about 30 kilometers an hour coming down a steep hill with hairpin turns the fog was thick uh, this blizzard was like this so it just came i had no chance to avoid it and we hit it we hit it hard we heard the big bang to start with and the next thing boom, i just lost all steering then Two seconds after that clunk, we heard it go and we were sliding on the ground. And um, that was it. It's 
a luxury to have a camper. It's nice and cozy in here. Well, it's still snowing out there and it's freezing cold. Internet is just amazing, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> this makes you realize that we're overlanding, but we're soft overlanders. We're not real overlanders. The guys that were overlanding, well, 20 years even. Even yeah. more, 30, 40 years ago, London to Singapore and stuff in their series Land Rover. They didn't, they couldn't break down in the middle of the mountains and just jump on Facebook and send some guy a message in Bishkek and within, literally within less than 10 minutes, I would say, we already had a tow truck on the way. I'm chatting now with Alex at Newman. Thank you, Alex. Um, he's asking me for the exact address. He's going to have the parts on their way via a courier to Bishkek. If it happened tomorrow, it's public holiday. So Alex wouldn't have been here. Yeah, we're, we're definitely very spoiled in regards to um, what we have access to with technology these days. I think it makes a big, big difference and it changes the way we overland. Les premiers à s'arrêter, Christian et Véronique, des Français de Lyon. Voilà, ils se sont arrêtés pour savoir si tout allait bien. It is 6 p.m. and we are still waiting for the tow truck. I'm reading my book, chilling out now. Is that a good book? That's okay. The weather is nice now. Hello, Ryan, it's Lee. Hey man, how are you? We're just, we're just chilling by the side of the road, you know. It is now 7 p.m. and we are still waiting uh, for the tow truck. We would like the car to go to this place. We went um, a few weeks ago, uh, Nikolai, maybe you remember, the master that did our shock absorbers. Maybe after Pamir, if we have a problem, we give you a call. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. And the car will say maybe one week until the part arrive. All right, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. I appreciate your help. 7.30. We are now losing the sun. We're waiting. We have the truck coming. I'm just scared of the... Better not be watching it. We are not going to do that. I don't want to do it. Wait for tomorrow, a big truck. It's 9 p.m. and we try to get off the road a little bit more. Oh! That's all we can do. Try to get some sleep and we see tomorrow what's going to happen. We're trying to stay positive, but it's hard as usual. Oh, he's done so much for us, Ryan. He told them how, but he's even sent them photos of our our setup, and they came out with this. It wasn't even a truck. Steph was actually the smart one. And she shut us down. Ideally for us, it's probably going to cost a fortune, but we need one of those massive trucks. You had a nice dinner. What do we had? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> We ran out of gas. <laughs> the heater on for like five minutes and Steph says, it's cold here. It's midnight and we have another truck. Yeah. 
What actually happened, we managed to get up. We've lost all steering at the front. So I put it in 4x4, so then that way it locked in the back and I was able to help out because his little winch here was struggling. So um, so yeah, I helped him out. He was pulling on his winch while I was reversing. Little bit, little bit. It was still hard work. We got it up, but then it was on an angle. This tire was right up against this, so we were sitting diagonally. We were using my snatch block and pulling sideways. Well, you know, the uh, waffle board. I jacked it up, I slid that underneath, and then that slid on the metal really easy. So then we rigged it up from over the side, pulled it sideways, and just inch by inch managed to get it nice and center. But I'm impressed, because this guy's professional. He he wasn't gonna go while the car was sitting on an, on the angle it was on. So once again, grizzly and bears on the back of a bloody truck. It's one o'clock in the morning, and we are on our way back to Bishkek. 7 a.m. That was the first for us. We slept in the camper on the back of a tow truck. We're waiting here now. Got a red light. This is the tunnel to go under the pass. It's a red light for trucks only, so cars can go. There's enough room for a truck and a car to go the opposite way, but two trucks together is a no-go. Hopefully Bishkek in a couple of hours. So we're on the final stretch. We're nearly at Nikolai's house, the master. We're gonna go into the city, find somewhere to stay, and we need to just relax. Oh, actually, no, not yet, Steffi. We're gonna go and see Ryan first, yeah? Get some new tires. Order some new tires, yeah. Finally bit the bullet. I've realized my mistake, I think, and I need to go back down. Big tires are not everything. Camper off, pull the car out. You stay here. It's a nice campsite, you know? Yeah. I want to stay here. Yeah. Big size, big problem. Big size, big problem. So he's already saying the big tires problem. I changed it already. I'm going to change it. Just small. Slowly. If you're interested in the repairs, then don't miss out next week's video. Pretty much our whole front hub just snapped in half. There's a Land Rover Defender ball joint that he's found in amongst all of his spare parts. He, he thinks he can fix this and he's going to re-tap the thread. He's rebuilt it. Just wants attention. This is like zero degrees. And now it's... Now down in Bishkek, we're 2,500 meters lower in altitude and it's roasting down here. I've still got my merino thermals on, so I'm getting changed. I tried to jump up on the tow truck last night and you know, low crotch pants, I'm not getting a pair of trackers like this again, just split in half. <laughs>